Hello BookTube, this is my Bell Redemption December wrap-up. Um, I bill heavily. Um, in fact, in 2022, I billed on 83 books. Um, I'm not always satisfied with those bales, um, so I will often give a second or third or fourth, hopefully not a fifth, look at books that I have previously bailed on, what I have come to call bail redemptions. Um, sometimes I will do a bail redemption um, as a reading project. So I will gather a number of books that I have previously bailed on and read them in a, like in a block. So um, in December, I decided I wanted to do a bell redemption block. So I selected 11 books, added a, another one to make 12. So, yeah, so my uh, bell redemption December was rather packed, and the 12 books were Dog by Susan McHugh, um, Wonderland by Stacey D'Erasmo. The Five Wounds by Kirsten Valdez Quaid. The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. The Promise of Space by James Patrick Kelly. Tokyo Revengers by Ken Wakui. Ravenna or Ravenna by Judith Heron. Lakota America by Pika Hamalainen. And Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. The Lizard Bohemians by Imer McBride, and Lot by Brian Washington. Um, of these 12, I did not get to Lot, um, which is a short story collection um, that I had to go at, I think, early last year, and found the um, sort of the ongoing story. There's like one, a series of short stories within the larger collection that are connected that I really did not like or come to not like. Um, the Letter of Bohemians by Imer McBride. This is a novel um, of a young Irish actress going to drama school and getting involved in it with an older actor. And Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson. This is the first volume in the Malazan uh, series. Um, so I did not get to these three. So what I will do is I will either try to get to them individually at some point over um, this coming year, or I will save them for another Bell Redemption uh, reading project if I have one this year. So they can go over there for now. And although I will take the bookmarks out of them before I put them back on the shelves. So of the nine that I did get to, I build on six or I, a bell redemption rejection. And I finished um, three. So they were bell redeemed. So of the rejections, they were... Dog by Susan McHugh. This is an uh, entry in the Reaction Animal series. It's um, basically dog is um, literary criticism with the focus being on the dog in human society or cultural criticism. And 
the book needlessly complicates matters, just absolutely needlessly. And it's terrible, just absolutely terrible. Uh, it put me off of the reaction animal series for a while, both um, bells, but certainly the second one, which I made it a little bit further in, but it was just terrible. So I think I will probably, I do need to send this one away, even though I, I kind of at times toy with wanting to collect the reaction animal series, but at the same time, do I really? Um, I also um, rejected or failed again on The Five Wounds by Kirsten Valdez Quaid. This is a novel set in New Mexico in which a <clears throat> no longer quite so young man named Amadio is um, selected by a um, um, I keep blanking on what they're called. Um, it's a lay religious society that uh, reenacts the crucifixion. I think it's the penitentes. Um, so he's selected to be Jesus and complicating matters is the arrival of his teenage daughter who is pregnant. And they sort of work their relationship issues out as well as other things over the course of the novel. Um, this Bill Redemption attempt actually did not make it nearly as far as my first attempt, um, largely because um, while the first time I read it, I kind of zeroed in on the fact that I didn't particularly care for Amadio or Angel. But in the back of my mind, um, I had issues with the concept of the novel. Um, the Five Wounds is an expansion of a short story. Um, and I think, I mean, to be honest, the short story wasn't my favorite from the collection. Um, but I think reading the expanded version here, it really brings to mind that do you really buy the concept? Uh, I mean, would Amadio really want to be a member of this group? I mean, he's lazy, he's parasitical, and he, and he, he really comes off, I mean, not legitimately really having the religious sort of conviction that one would associate with being a part of this group. Um, and why would his uncle, who seems to be a no, or grand uncle, um, who comes off as being a bit of a no-nonsense sort of person, really accept his waste of a nephew? It's just, I mean, it really doesn't work. So, my bill redemption attempt kind of really zeroed in on that and I just, I could not overcome it. So yeah, I don't know necessarily if I will keep the novel and let it sit for a few years and come back to it or go ahead and send it on its way until I kind of want to have another go at it and then pick it up. Which I guess is one way where like having access to a good used bookstore comes in handy because you can kind of go in there and you're never entirely sure what you're going to find. Whereas shopping online, it, there's a lot more of an intentionality to that. Um, but anyway, so I also rejected um, The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. This is the novel of a young boy, young man who um, comes to terms with the death of his father and his mother's emotional sort of uh, decline after the death of her husband. By and so the boy kind of copes by talking to inanimate objects, namely the book that is the narrator of this novel. And my first go at it, I 
thought it was okay. I think I said in my my initial sort of um, go at the book that I rather liked what I read up until the scene where the book uh, narrates the first meeting of the boy's parents, which was a bit, yeah. Um, and then going back to it, I kind of noticed a lot more issues with the book. So I didn't make it nearly as far with this time either. And again, I, I don't know necessarily if I'm going to come back to this and keep it or send it on its way. Um, I know my reaction to this book has got me questioning uh, my thoughts on Ozeki's earlier novel, A Tale, A Tale for the Time Being, which I think in my, my memory, I've made myself think I liked it a lot more than I did. I thought it was maybe okay. It's like, it was okay. I didn't love it. I don't know necessarily if I liked it. So anyway, I don't know. Um, I also rejected um, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. This is the series for which N.K. Jemison won uh, three Hugos three years in a row, um, which is an amazing achievement. Um, so basically in this world, it's an epic fantasy, effectively. Every few generations, uh, the world undergoes a tectonic volcanic catastrophe that then leads to a climatic catastrophe. And the people of this world have adapted. Uh, some have developed the abilities to manipulate the flow of tectonic forces. Um, these people, uh, called Orogenes, are um, feared and loathed. And one day, a very powerful Origin uh, basically um, uses their power to cause the big one, the um, fifth season, um, which is what these um, re recurring uh, catastrophes are called. Um, that will not last for years or decades, but for millennia. And all of that really doesn't measure up to the loss of a child. Um, and so I had to go at this novel in 2017, and I didn't make it out of the prologue. Um, I have often struggled with N.K. Jemisin's style, and her style in this one is particularly um, difficult, I would say. Um, this attempt, this Bell of Redemption, I did get a bit further, but I really did not like what I read. Again, I just, I, I've never really connected to N.K. Jemisin's style. Um, even in the one novel of hers that I kind of liked. So I think I'm probably done with N.K. Jemisin. Although I didn't despise the fifth season nearly so much as I despised The Promise of Space by James Patrick Kelly. This is a short story collection that I read, I think I had to go at it in 2018. I'm pretty sure I did. And I despised the first two stories and about midway through the second story, um, I bailed. So on this bill, Redemption, I did get further in about halfway through, but I despised nearly every short story I read. Um, I think there were maybe one or two that I didn't actively loathe. So this book is definitely on its way out. The next time you see it, it will be in an unhaul video. Um, the most frustrating Bill Redemption rejection I had this um, Bill Redemption December was uh, Tokyo Revengers 
by Ken Wakui. This is a manga series um, about a young man who goes back in time. He somehow develops this ability to go back, to jump back into the past. And as he develops this ability, he aims to save a number of people who were close to him at the time. Um, he got involved in uh, youth gangs in Tokyo. And I wanted to like this book. Um, I wanted to, I've wanted to read it ever since I first heard about it a few years ago. And um, when I heard that the um, uh, English language translation was on the offing, I jumped at it or jumped on it. But while I love the artwork, I mean, the artwork is absolutely wonderful, gorgeous. I don't care for the story and um, the main character is just, I can't stand him. Just, I can't stand him at all. So that was frustrating. Now I did manage to bill redeem three books. Which is usually pro for the course for these things. I think the last time I had a Bell Redemption reading project, it was like two books that I successfully Bell redeemed. Although I didn't particularly care. Well, I didn't care for one, and I think I thought the other one was okay. But not necessarily one that I would want to keep. Anyway, so the three that I successfully Bell redeemed, they are Wonderland by Stacey D. Arismo. This is a novel about a, a woman who um, was a rather famous musician for a few years who has sort of declined, who is trying to make a comeback. Um, and so she goes on tour to Europe where she is far more popular than she is elsewhere. And during this tour, her comeback tour, um, she remembers back to her childhood her youth, her um, previous career as a musician, um, her various relationships. And the book, I think, I've, so this is my second Bill Redemption attempt at this. Um, I, the first time I read it, I didn't make it out of the first chapter. The second time I think I made it to about 50 pages. So the third time I managed to get all the way through and it's okay. It's not really something I'm super into. Um, I thought there were a few really well done passages and chapters, but I think around the midpoint, the novel begins to fall apart, um, particularly once uh, one of her ex-lovers uh, makes an appearance in the present, the novel really starts to go downhill and the uh, final chapter is just, what? I don't know. So I think while this is a successful Bale Redemption, I do think it will be going to, uh, yeah, an unhaul video, um, which I'm pretty much, this is going to go into a donation box for the Friends at the Library book sale. Since it is the next library copy, I decided those are going to be uh, donated. Um, so the other two um, books that I bill redeemed are history. Um, the first, well, technically the last one that I built, like the last book I read for Bell Redemption December um, is Lakota America by Pika Hamalainen. This is a history of the Lakota peoples from the mid um, 17th century to the, um, uh, into the late 20th century. Um, and so it looks at how the Lakota became uh, Plains people, their relationships to um, the French, the British, 
the um, Americans, other uh, native peoples, um, their rights of prominence, their um, sort of how they are after um, wounded knee. And um, I don't know what I make of this book. I honestly, I don't know what I make of it. Um, it's interesting. Um, Hamalainen's history is fascinating. Um, but there's just something about the writing that I don't connect to, that it's rather maybe boring, um, even though it's like it's fascinating, but it's also boring, which is weird. Um, but reading it just, while I'm happy that I did Bell Redeem it, it also kind of sort of killed a lot of my interest for history going forward. Because um, I had not as grandiose a reading plan as I had last year for my No Fiction 2022, but I did have uh, some plans to um, really focus on collecting some history early in the year. Um, also, I was rather gung-ho about the Historathon, and now both are very much tamped down. So I just, I don't know uh, what I make of this. It's kind of disheartening, ultimately. Um, and yeah, so that's about all I can say for that. Is I do not know what I make of Lakota America at all. So the third Bell Redemption I had and the other his work of history, and really my favorite book of all of them um, is Ravenna by Judith Aaron. So this is a history of Ravenna um, from the uh, fifth century to the ninth century uh, during Ravenna's time as a uh, capital of Rome, the capital of the Exarchate of Italy, the capital of an Ostrogothic kingdom, and a part of the Papal States. Um, this book, so I read it earlier this year uh, for as one of the first books I read in the year, um, alongside Lakota America. And this one, I think in part, um, the introduction I thought was very rough. Um, but I think getting over that, the near the history itself is very fascinating. I think the only issues I really have are the um, focus on the architecture. Um, I thought that was a bit excessive and a bit derailing. But besides that, I really enjoyed Ravenna. So quite happy that I did Bell Redeem this one. So, Booktube, that was my Bell Redemption December. Um, I don't know if there will be a Bell Redemption December in 2023, given that uh, one of my long-term, year-long reading projects is the 10 contemporary classics I must Bell Redeem. So, those 10 books, once I get them all in, uh, will probably act as my Bell Redemption project for 2023. But I will try to get to these three at some point. When, I don't know, but I will report on a Friday because that will be when I do these things. But anyway, Booktube, I might be back later this evening with a... Uh, clearing my wish list um, video, and if not, then I'll see you tomorrow with hopefully a tag video. So until then, thank you, BookTube. Have a great day and stay safe.